Hey guys, I've got a really fun video for you today because two of my all-time favorite worlds in the automotive industry have combined to make something really special. I am of course talking about off-roading, four-wheel drives, and electrification, or EVs. And what we have for you today is the brand new Jeep Wrangler 4xE. This is a plug-in hybrid electrified Wrangler with some pretty impressive stats. It's coming to the US by 2021, and it's gonna go from zero to 60 in about six seconds according to Jeep. In fact, this is now the most powerful Wrangler ever made. Total horsepower is 375, total torque 470 pound feet. This is what is called a plug-in hybrid or you may have heard it referred to as a PHEV and a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle combines gasoline in the form of a two liter turbocharged gasoline engine and electricity in the form of two motors to get you a pretty impressive performer that should also perform just as good off-road, if not better, than the standard gasoline models. Now let's talk about how it works. In the front, you're gonna find a two liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. This engine is direct injected, it uses a twin scroll turbo, and that engine makes 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Now behind that gasoline engine, just in front of the transmission, is a large electric traction motor. This motor by itself develops 134 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque. There is also a small third electric motor in the front of the vehicle. It's run by a belt off the front of the engine. This is kind of just a motor generator. It's in charge of starting up the gasoline engine as well as providing some electricity for the vehicle. That one by itself can develop a peak of 44 horsepower and 39 pound-feet of torque. But when you combine all of these numbers together and when physics happens, that's how you get that total system output of 375 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque. Now, believe it or not, this electrified Wrangler is more powerful both in terms of horsepower and torque than the three liter turbocharged diesel Wrangler. It's also more powerful by a long shot than the twin turbo 2.7 liter Bronco that's coming out next year. So this is a pretty impressive looking vehicle. Now in terms of specs, a plug-in hybrid vehicle can run on electricity alone if you plug it in at home, up to 25 miles according to Jeep. And then when that battery dies, it's gonna operate just like any other hybrid. It's gonna cruise down the road with plenty of power. You're not gonna see any power loss when that high voltage battery is depleted because the car is smart enough to keep power going into the battery just in case you need it when you need to accelerate down the road. So it's kind of an interesting technology for those of you that don't wanna to commit to a full electric vehicle. And this is really the first attempt by a major manufacturer at combining a proper off-roader with electrification. Now let's talk a little bit more about the specifics. The battery pack it's very large. It's a 400 volt, 17.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. It lives underneath the rear seat. And believe it or not, this plug-in hybrid Wrangler is a full 500 pounds heavier than the standard 3.6 liter V6 Wrangler. Now, in terms of capacity, 7.3 kilowatt hours is pretty large actually. The early Nissan Leafs, those were about 24 kilowatt hours and of course, those didn't have a backup gasoline engine. Our smart car out there has the exact same battery capacity, 17 kilowatt hours, but of course the smart car is a tiny little toaster thing and that can go about 68 miles on charge versus 25 miles in the big off-road Wrangler. Now, this battery pack is made up of 96 cells. They appear to be Panasonic cells and mounted under the rear seat, fully waterproofed as well. So Jeep says that this Wrangler 4xE is not gonna lose out on any off-road capability because all the connections, all the high voltage connections, all the battery technology is fully enclosed and fully sealed so that you can still get up to 30 inches of water forwarding if you get the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xE trim. Now when you combine both gasoline and electric technology, Jeep says the total range of this vehicle is up to 400 miles. And the cool thing too is they have to use a lot of technology to keep these electric components cool. So for example, the battery in the rear is not only heated, but it's cooled using the Jeep's AC refrigerant. So if you're in Arizona, you're not gonna get super hot overheated batteries. It's gonna use the vehicle's AC system to make sure that stays nice and cool. Now there are three different drive modes in this Strangler 4xE. The default mode is called hybrid. So if you wake up in the morning and unplug your vehicle and just drive it, 
the car is going to default to electric only until that battery dies, in which case it will just drive along normally on its hybrid system. There's another mode called electric. When you stick it in electric mode, it's going to run entirely on electricity until, of course, the battery dies, in which case it will go back to the hybrid mode. Now, when you're on electricity, it will still kick in the gas engine if you're at like wide open throttle just to give you that boost you need to pass whatever you're trying to pass. And there's also a mode called e-save. So if you want, say you're going to go drive on the highway where electricity is less efficient, you can push the e-save button. Then the vehicle is going to run primarily on its gasoline engine until you get into like a city. Then you click on electricity. You can drive along in the city on electricity, go back on the highway, click e-save, save the remaining power for when you're going to really maximize that, ga that electric efficiency, which is and like stop and go uh, situations or the cool part is you can even save that battery system for the trail and you can run this Wrangler 4xe in electricity when you get out onto the trail. There's another button in here that's a little bit weird compared to a standard Wrangler. There's a max regen button. Now of course these electric vehicles have a regenerative capability so when you're slowing down when you're coming down steep mountains they can actually run those motor generators in reverse and send power back into the battery for use when you have to go back up the hill. When you click the max regen button, it's gonna operate more like an electric vehicle. So when you let off the throttle, it'll slow down by itself as it's sucking power back into the battery pack. Or if you hate that, and you just wanna drive it like a standard vehicle, turn that puppy off, and then you can just use the brakes. It will still regen using the brake pedal, but it just won't be as aggressive as when you click that max regen button. Now, in terms of charging, you'll notice the charging port is located on the side of the vehicle up by the A pillar. Open that up, and there should be a little port there where you can plug in your charge connector. Now the cool thing is the Wrangler 4xe also incorporates LEDs on top of the dash. Just for a quick glance, you'll know what your battery capacity is at while you're charging up. That's a nice feature. In terms of charging times and charging speeds, Jeep said that on 110 volt outlets, the Wrangler 4xe should go from completely empty to completely full in about 12 hours. That's pretty darn slow. Granted, maybe if you plug it in when you get home, it'll be fully charged in the morning. That's nice, but this is not going to be a system like a Tesla where you can go to a fast charger and get a full battery in 10 or 15 minutes. And that's because the onboard charger appears to be quite pokey, I think is the word for it. Now what Jeep has done is something a little bit interesting. This is totally nerdy. You don't have to pay attention to this. But what Jeep has done in the Wrangler 4xe is they've incorporated something called a DC to DC converter and the charger into one unit. Typically these are two separate boxes in electric vehicles. But according to the spec sheet, uh, that unit is only rated at 2.5 kilowatts. Now that probably doesn't mean anything to you, but here, I'll, I'll spell it out pretty slowly. A kilowatt is just basically a charging speed. Now you can find kilowatts by multiplying volts times amps. So typically at home, you might be able to pull a maximum of like 1.6 or 1.7 kilowatts on your standard wall outlet. Now, pretty much every electric vehicle or even plug-in hybrid has the ability to charge at 240 volts too. You see those little charging stations around. It's basically like a dryer outlet. Now at 240 volts, a typical electric vehicle might be able to charge at six or seven kilowatts. That's very standard. So if in fact this is actually just a 2.5 kilowatt charger, that's really slow. Heck, even that little yellow, bright yellow smart car outside, that can charge it up to about three kilowatts. So the smart car can charge faster than this Wrangler Rubicon. But keep in mind, this is not intended to be a road trip vehicle on electricity. This is supposed to be, hey, when you get home, just plug it in, get some electricity. Electricity typically is much more affordable than gasoline to drive on. So you could potentially, if you have a short commute, drive this thing back and forth to work every day, plug it in at night and you know spend pennies on the dollar compared to gasoline. That is a pretty big, big benefit. Now let's talk about the off-road capability because Jeep says first and foremost, this is still a Wrangler. Now there are three trims of this plug-in hybrid. There's the Jeep Wrangler 4xe, the Jeep Wrangler Sahara 4xE and the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xE. And just like the gasoline versions, the Rubicon is the top trim. All the Wrangler 4xEs have a two-speed transfer case. And if you're wondering, yes, you can use the electric capability in every mode of four-wheel drive. So if you want to use four-wheel drive low and run it on electricity, you can. Every Wrangler 4xE has solid axles. Uh, they all have Dana 44s. The Rubicon still has the uh, locking disc front and rear. It still has a sway bar disconnect. It still has the same approach and departure as a standard Wrangler. It's still gonna go pretty much everywhere you point it because one of the benefits of electricity is 
instant torque right off the bat, right? And this is what I'm excited about. When you're out on the rocks, you don't have to wait for RPMs to build. You don't have to wait for a turbo to spool. You can just lightly modulate that throttle and this electric motor should kick in immediately and get you up and over the obstacle. That's gonna be really cool to see how it performs out in Moab because Heck, if, if my, my dad over there will let me, this thing will be Moab next week if we can get one. And we'll see how it performs. I'm also excited to see how the high voltage systems perform in wet situations. So they say they're fully waterproof. We'll get it into some water. We'll play around with that. Make sure that we don't turn into uh, filet o fishes while out in some of the water crossings here in Colorado. Now, unfortunately, pricing has not been released, which is a shame, but they do say that it will be available in early, by early 2021, excuse me. Now, how does this plug-in hybrid compare to some other vehicles? Well, currently there's not a lot of other off-road oriented plug-in hybrids. Probably the closest one I could find is the Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid, a vehicle I took off-road a while back. That has a slightly smaller battery capacity, 13 kilowatt hours. It can also go less distance on electric only. So about 19 miles all electric um, on the Range Rover and it's also less efficient. So the EPA rates electric vehicles in something called MPGE or miles per gallon equivalent. The Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid is rated at 42 MPGE and Jeep says that this Wrangler 4xe will have a rating of 50 MPGE. So that's pretty cool to see. Now, another plug-in hybrid vehicle granted far less off-road worthy is the RAV4 Prime, one that people have been super excited about. That is far more efficient than the Wrangler probably not surprising because it's not a perfect cube, but the RAV4 Prime has an MPG-E rating of 94 and it has a slightly bigger battery capacity, 18.1 kilowatt hours versus 17.3, but the RAV4 will go 42 miles on all electric only according to the EPA. Now what about its gas counterparts? Well, I talked about power and performance. The Wrangler 4xe is more powerful than the diesel. Like I said, the diesel's rated at 260 horsepower and 442 torque. Uh, not only does this have over 100 more horsepower than the diesel, it also has almost 30 more pound-feet of torque than the diesel. In terms of the upcoming Bronco, the Wrangler 4xe, uh, a lot more powerful. The Bronco with the 2.7 is supposed to make 310 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque. Once again, that 470 pound-feet of torque and the 375 horsepower greatly trump the Bronco, but there are rumors to be uh, an electrified Bronco coming up soon too, so we'll see what that entails. There's also rumored to be that big V8 powered Wrangler. No official specs on that yet, or if it will even make it to market, but we have seen prototypes testing of that vehicle, so we'll see what the horsepower and torque numbers are on that. But I'm very excited about this because not only do you have the same capability, it looks like, as the standard Wrangler, you also have the same towing at 3,500 pounds, and you have more power than, than a standard gasoline Wrangler or even the diesel Wrangler, and potentially you'll have cost savings over the long run too because it'll be more efficient. Exterior design, pretty much the same. The Rubicons get these blue tow hooks. They have blue accents throughout, but it doesn't really look all that different. Doors still come off, windshield still folds down, top still comes off, so this looks pretty cool. There's one big question though, pricing. It's all gonna come down to price for me because if this is reasonably priced, it could be a pretty big winner. Well, as always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.